You know, in a lot of my seasonal videos, I often state that it feels as if horror anime are underrepresented. So that's inspired me a bit. Why not make a video on horror anime this time? Surely there can't be too few of them, right? Lo and behold, I went back and took a trip down memory lane, realizing that when it comes to horror as an encompassing genre, there's actually quite a number of shows that I've enjoyed. Enough to make a long list, in fact. Granted, horror in this list will be used rather loosely, just like how people tend to easily attribute that genre to shows with some gore, supernatural beings and such, regardless of whether the show's actual purpose would be to induce nightmare fuel or not. Still, this is what we're going to have today. I'll be listing down my 20 favorite horror anime. Strap yourselves in and get ready to see the wide range and the numerous ways the genre can provide the so-called thrills the horror enthusiasts look for. Or perhaps they just have legacies that are hard to ignore. Hell Girl is here to help us start out strong. <laughs> Mentioning Hell Girl reminds me of the time when this show was pretty popular. There's a lot of cosplay and it did have a sizable cultural footprint in its heyday. That much is understandable after getting a chance to check it out and knowing what the buzz is all about. You see, Hell Girl's an episodic anime, one which is shown in a case of the day format. One thing connects all cases, however, the presence of Ai Enma, the titular Hell Girl who ferries souls into the underworld. She gets summoned through a website where victims can set her on the target at one steep cost. Even the victim will suffer consequences and face a eternal damnation upon his death. I mean, that's basically the gist of the story. Simple, chilling, yet very effective in showing us the darkest depths of the human heart. It's a decent intro into the psychological horror genre, and with really superb art and sound direction, that's all you need to get into the mood for this show. We move on with another show from the mid-2000s, Blood Plus. Yep, yeah, this list isn't all about the anime that fully lean towards the spooky aspect of things. Horror is a pretty broad genre, and it also encompasses action shows like Blood Plus. If you're not in the know about this one, Blood Plus is the story of an anemic girl, Saya, and how she awakens her blood-based powers after an encounter with a vampire. Together with a rescuer, Haji, the duo teams with the organization Red Shield to take the fight to the blood-feeding monsters. It may also be the path to unlock the mystery of Saya's past. Blood Plus was a fun watch back in the day. It helped provide some darker alternatives for people who wanted monster fighting action shows, something which Claymore also provided a year or so down the line. Blood Plus is about the drama and the emotional impact of moments as much as it is about the fighting. The premise isn't too unique even for its time, but does the rather simplistic story really matter if you can find yourself invested enough in the action and characters? Shiki is up next on our list. Here's our second vampire anime gracing the list. This one, however, was released right around the vampire boom in international pop culture. One main difference is that Shiki doesn't beat around the bush and portray those creatures as friendly allies of humanity. It harkens back to the traditional tales of the creatures being monsters to be feared, and it opts to go for a thriller approach, putting vampires as the main cause of a series of deaths in a town. Ace Dr. Ozaki comes up with this conclusion, and it's up to him to convince the town of the danger before it's too late. Now, when I mentioned how it goes back to the roots of the traditional vampire myth. I do mean it. In contrast to something like Vampire Knight or Rosario Vampire, the thing that stands out is that Shiki brings the creatures back to their undead and more horror-leaning roots, like their abhorrence of sunlight or how they can be killed by stakes through the heart. When it comes to the actual content of the anime, it also has no shortage when it comes to throwing moral and ethical questions at the audience. It's certainly one of the more introspective horror series out there. Following that, we have a horror anime done in a similar vein, Ghost Hunt. No, Ghost Hunt isn't another story about vampires, nor is it about investigating a series of deaths in town. What it is, though, is another horror series that's more introspective, more intelligent, if you will, especially in how carefully it handles the topic of ghost hunting, at least compared to my expectations. It's not nearly as serious or as dark as Shiki, and there's some moments of light-hearted humor, but it's a show that puts a strong emphasis on the characters and fleshing them out. The characters have very engaging interactions with one another, and the arc-based format of the show, as opposed to having one big overarching narrative, 
narrative gives lots of said characters a chance to shine. Do take note that for a horror anime, Ghost Hunt isn't scary at all. I don't mean that as a knock on the show, since the word horror is used very loosely in the world of anime, with the tag being easily slapped onto anything that has ghosts and demons and such. It does bring the suspense at times, but it's pretty evident that the main point of focus for the series are the relationships between the characters and the mysteries that are self-contained in arcs instead of actually giving viewers nightmares. That in spite of the ominous looking preview art. Are you tired of endlessly scrolling videos that you don't even want to watch on other social media platforms? Well, say hello to the sponsors of this video, Fresh Cut. It's the best platform that was built for creators and their fans specializing in niches like anime and gaming by a team that used to work with Twitch and has 20 plus years of combined experience. You can find tons of anime content creators in Fresh Cut, for example, yours truly. There's also the Anime Wall, which has similar features to Reddit. You can find memes, answer questions and what ifs, and even discuss your hot takes with your favorite creators. Not only that, I've got a little surprise for you that you'll certainly enjoy. Fresh Cut and I are entering a partnership and to celebrate I'll be giving away a three month Crunchyroll subscription to one lucky fan who comments on my latest wall posts on Fresh Cut. So be sure to find me there and take a chance at being the winner. There's also going to be another giveaway so download Fresh Cut using the code VINITUBE so that you can enter. So what are you waiting for? Take a look at Fresh Cut now. Thank you Fresh Cut and back to the video. We then take a look at Tokyo Ghoul. Needless to say, Tokyo Ghoul is the most popular anime on the list so far. Heck, I'll even say that it's the most mainstream the list is going to get. Pretty much everyone from almost a decade ago has been caught in the really exciting story of how Kaneki's deadly date introduced him to the world of ghouls, where he slowly comes to grips with his new destiny. One that involves countless battles against both ghouls and humans, as well as an internal battle with identity. Tokyo Ghoul may have had a polarized reception, as with a lot of popular shows during the time. The edgy and angsty atmosphere also helped attract the snarkiest of anime fans back then. But what it does do good, it does excellently. Great soundtrack and action sequences that dial up the gruesome nature of the scenes are the anime's speciality and it's rife with designs that are both attractive yet also capture the creepy and monstrous aesthetics of the characters. Unfortunately, it's also a classic example of adaptation gone wrong, as I've talked about in one of my previous videos. Still, it's got a load of good in it in terms of spectacle and it isn't hard to see why it became popular back when it first aired. Let's all welcome the first movie in the list, Vampire Hunter D. Coming from the year 2000, Vampire Hunter D is a movie that I can recommend to even people who aren't exactly anime fans. On paper, it's a pretty simple premise. D, a vampire human hybrid, gets tasked with a mission to rescue a rich family's daughter who's been kidnapped by vampires. In his quest, D's flanked with bounty hunters who have their own powers, serving as his competition as they take on the creatures of the night that await them. The thing that strikes out for me with Vampire Hunter D is the art. There's a signature feel to it, befitting the horror and tragedy elements that embody most of the plot. All that adds to the excellent sound direction and the great action sequences that litter the entire movie. It also doesn't waste time getting you into it with an opening sequence that many people have praised to be one of the best out of anime cinema in the 2000s. It's almost two hours of breathtaking spectacle. It may not seem as impressive now, but when it comes to capturing the intended atmosphere, Vampire Hunter D is pretty damn good. <sighs> How about following it up with another movie, Paprika? <laughs> We've had a list so far that features anime centered on ghosts or other supernatural creatures, so it's time for a change now. You see, even if the monsters go, one horrifying element persists, the human psyche. For some, there isn't anything in the world more horrifying than the potentials of the human mind, and Paprika is a movie that takes a surrealist look at the world of dreams. It's exactly what you'd probably expect from the premise, a detective story of sorts that puts most of its eggs in the trippy imagery basket. Paprika is a work that you can clearly tell came from the brains of Satoshi Con. There's some impressive visual technique being shown and the overall theme of the movie about the power and sanctity of the human psyche is something we can ponder on for a while. It's not a horror in the traditional definition, but it does give the creeps when watching it, largely thanks to the imagery and implications that hit close to home. What the? Coming 
carnage rules supreme in the world of Doro Hey Doro. Right around the start of the decade, I had high hopes of Doro Hey Doro. After the smoke cleared in the winter 2020 season, I'm glad to say that my hopes weren't unfounded. It's indeed a great adaptation of a source material that captured the essence of the story. It's gritty, it's violent, and it's unrestrained in all of its madness. It really was unconventional, feeling like an anime that's not exactly designed to be an anime, but one of those crass western action cartoons, if you get what I mean. Mixing dark humour with violence is the play, and Mappa knocked it out of the park both in the story's execution and the visual department, which encapsulates the surreal feel of the world the series is set in. Doro Hey Doro may not be for everyone, and I admit that some scenes, especially the more grotesque ones, can be off-putting, but anime fans can be some of the most daring fans in the world aren't we? If you're out for some dark comedy with a blend of fighting and unabated violence, Doro Hey Doro might be worth a shot. Akira is up next and it really looks like a product of its time. If you're into anime history, Akira should be no stranger to you. It's one of the most important anime credited for the medium's presence overseas. It's a pioneer in that sense, and while there's a lot to unpack with the movie, it's also a pretty nice take on horror. Yeah, I know it's not primarily a horror anime like you'd expect, but Espia's in confinement letting loose in a dystopian town rife with violence does have some uncomfortable connotations. It's not an easy watch for someone not yet attuned to the medium due to the complicated plot and the gratuitous violence, but you know what? It also led the way for anime to establish its identity that separates it from the pack back in the late 80s. Akira gives a good look at what the anime scene was like when it tried making headway into the western market and how different and how uniquely edgy it was. Akira is not a perfect movie by any means but its legacy and how differently and seriously it approached topics compared to a lot of modern anime makes it a deserving watch. Another movie takes this spot before we reach the halfway point. Memories. This one not ringing a bell with you? With such a generic name and a release in the lull period of the 90s, Memories is as niche as you can get with anime that I'll be featuring on this list. What it is, in contrast to Akira, is a collection of short films done by Madhouse. Yes, they were around all the way back then. The three films in this anthology all rely heavily on imagery, some creepy than not. If we're going to categorise it as horror, it feels more akin to what Paprika's trying to do, rattle the most stoic people with bizarre visuals, which, along with the sounds, make it seem as if there's some something uncanny, something wrong even if there isn't. When you realise that Satoshi Kon had a hand in the creation of this movie, it all starts to make sense. Add the visuals to the underlying themes and implications given by the third one of the shorts, and then you kind of have the groundwork for something which could be considered unconventional horror. If you guess that the next title is Higurashi, take your cookie. <laughs> Higurashi has quite the history. Pretty popular back in the days of visual novel adaptations, getting multiple anime series before a period of silence and a sudden revival at the start of the decade. Higurashi, in a couple of ways, does remind me of Summertime Render if you're looking for a modern comparison. Taking place in a rural setting blanketed by a series of murders and disappearances, Higurashi managed to earn itself the horror tag by being far, far more gratuitous and relishing in its violence. It also can be quite unnerving with how it delivers in its mystery, catching you off guard with the excessively cute character designs before things go off the rails. Horribly at that. Even if you know that this is one of the gory shows where things go wrong real quick, it's also got a good way of managing the suspense and keeping you guessing. You know something's gonna happen, but you're powerless to stop it, much less know where the trouble's coming from. Higurashi is a show that keeps you on your toes with its thrilling mysteries and depictions of violence, and that's part of the reason why it's created such a name for itself back in the era of tearjerker or romantic visual novels. Novels. Now, if you prefer to have your violence served in a dish of coolness, Helsing Ultimate is here for you. A 
A contemporary of the Higurashi series, Helsing Ultimate is the OVA series starring the coolest and most powerful vampire, Alucard. Extermination of his own kind is Alucard's thing, and he works alongside the Helsing organization in fighting for mankind's survival. And mind you, the fights can get all sorts of wild and crazy. It's the perfect blend of badass and unapologetic edge for teens in the era who will especially enjoy the fights and the finger constantly being given to deep meanings or morals. It's a simple anime that easily gives the fans what they want. Over the top anime carried by the rule of cool, and when I say it works, it really, really works. Dark elements, swearing, a lot of blood, scary yet badass character designs and powers, Helsing Ultimate has it all for its target demographic. It's a grand spectacle with a ridiculous overpowered main character and it's totally honest with what it's trying to sell to you. 10 episodes of this OVA ought to do the trick if you're one of the people thirsting for this kind of content. <laughs> From the 2000s, we zoom to the present with a pretty promising hotshot ZOM 100. ZOM 100 wasted no time turning heads and becoming one of the more popular anime of the season, eh? To think that it has a pretty simple plot, albeit with a context for the main character to catch it up to speed with the youth culture of the modern era. Still, even with the whole droning through life aspect of it, at its core, ZOM 100 is yet another zombie flick series, so what makes it so special? Everything else, I'd say. The production values, particularly in the art and animation department, just hammers home the message that this won't just be another zombie anime. It doesn't just tell you. It it makes you know that this is something special you're witnessing, even if at its core, it really wasn't. That's not meant as criticism of the show, as watching it I find myself thoroughly entertained. The plot moves at a pace that keeps things exciting, and the characters are a fun bunch to follow. While I can concede to an extent that ZOM 100 is mostly style over substance, that doesn't change the fact that when style works, it works. Then pack it alongside some rather thoughtful themes like how we value life and our self-identity, and you've got yourselves a winner. Mononoke makes it to the list because why not? Looking at Mononoke, the first thing that stands out is the art style. It's outlandish and a departure from what we've become used to in anime. The overall style, reminding me of ancient paintings, also helps supplement the anime, which is a collection of short stories featuring traditional Japanese horrors and the medicine seller main character's attempts at exercising them. Each story is simple, monster of the week fair, but every single one of them has its own uniqueness to it. The strongest point for the series has to be its sound direction, which does such a great job in setting the mood and unsettling even some of the most hardened anime fans out of the simplest of scenarios. Mononoke may not be the first thing that anime fans pick out to watch of a seasonal chart. I know I wouldn't. That's why I'm here to give this show a recommendation and tell you about how good it is. It's a great pit stop in your road to watching different kinds of anime horror, one that's very Japanese in essence. <laughs> Next in line is Arjin. <laughs> How fitting to put Arjin right after Mononoke. Both of them share one thing in common. They're both shows that people can easily judge based on the cover. While Mononoke has the traditional Japanese art going for it, Arjin has the CG. And we all know full CG shows don't have a stellar reputation. Which I think is a disservice because Arjin is a pretty great show. At first glance, it may seem like a typical seinen action series, but it has some strikingly good points when we get a chance to look at the narrative and the themes surrounding the plot. It has plot points that speak about one's identity and how it puts one in conflict with the other, so to speak. It's not a rare theme, as we already can see with Tokyo Ghoul a while ago, but I do think that Arjun executes it in a substantially better way. The plot moves quickly though, making sure that watchers will always have something to look forward to. Don't let the CG or the other assumptions fool you. Arjun may not be the best or the most thematic action horror title out there, but if I may say, it does pretty well for itself. Following that is From the New World. <laughs> Air 
airing in 2012, From the New World was one of A1 Pictures' more ambitious works at the time. Psychological mysteries with a dash of horror tend not to become mainstream hits, but the studio managed a pretty good outing in adapting this novel. It did end up garnering a good reputation for itself as time went on, but I'd be lying if I said that people were lining up to watch Saki and her friends foray into Sage Academy and their eventual uncovering of the psychic school's dark secrets. Character development will always remain the strongest point for the show, but I've also got to give a lot of points for its way of drumming up the tension and unveiling horrifying revelations. It takes a while to rev up, but once you get yourself caught up in the surprisingly eerie and immersive narrative, you'll definitely find it hard to let go. There really is something touching to the heart in seeing the struggles of people looking to overcome dystopia, and that makes this a coming of age that you just gotta see. We have the final movie on the list up next, it's Perfect Blue. With how hot Oshinoko has been in the anime community, oldies like me can't help but recall the days when some anime have tried tackling the dark side of the Japanese entertainment industry. Enter another Satoshi Kon movie and one of the darkest examples of those attempts, Perfect Blue. In fact, this was the film that put the guy on the map and it's really easy to see why. Just like Paprika, it feels different from the usual anime fare, going completely deep into showing the dredges of human nature. Only this time, it's more direct and it's in your face in terms of showing the darkest depths of the idol industry. There's little time for light-hearted moments in this movie and its cynical outlook may not be for everyone, but it matters as a piece of work regardless. It's a movie that I think can still speak to the modern generation. The setting and the art itself may not have aged well, but its power in speaking to us and demonstrating its message still remains. It continues to paint a bleak picture of humanity with its graphic violence and sexual themes presented in very serious ways, not like how a lot of anime tend to trivialize those elements. We head towards the end of the list and we're doing so in style with Berserk. Berserk has been one of the shows that seems to strongly capture the imagination of the teen audience, specifically the edgier and more rebellious ones. It's pretty easy to see why, as Berserk is yet another one of those anime that relishes violence and taboo. There's no room for light-hearted moments here, and there's no place for moe in the world of Berserk. Just simple, intense drama and action carried by its very interesting and superbly charismatic cast of characters. In addition to the gore and the violence which likely earned Berserk the horror tag according to some, it also has no qualms about showing the unglamorous side of the world, an atmosphere that looms over the story as a whole. That much is evident with how danger seems to lurk in every corner, that no matter how strong Guts and the Band of Falcon may be, the next conquest might just be their last. It's a cynical show that earns some critical acclaim thanks to the amazing handling of themes that some shows wouldn't even dare approach. Berserk as an anime has been a mixed bag. For the sake of getting the best experience, go for the 1997 one with 25 episodes. We're at number two, and I think it's fitting to put Promised Neverland in here. <gasps> Promised Neverland and its, um turbulent history as an anime in a media franchise is a whole topic in itself. It had the highest of highs, becoming a smash hit set to take over the anime world for years to come, to getting a second season that people wish never even existed. To give context as to why that was the reaction to the second season, we've got to first see how great the first season was. The synopsis for the series is quite interesting and horrifying. Children being raised in farmhouses all for the sake of being fed to demons was pretty scary in itself, but its true prowess comes out when you watch the anime. The thing is, the horror doesn't exactly come from the demons who were a non-presence. There wasn't excessive amounts of gore and there were definitely not a lot of jump scares. But watching the show, you really feel that there's going to be those elements. With how good the camera cuts are and how the sound was utilised, there always seems to be a lingering feeling hanging over you and making you expect the worst. You'd always be bracing yourself for the worst and the uncanny with each character's action or each corner the characters turn. That's the power of ambient horror and Promise Neverland simply specialises in that, all while giving us characters to strongly root for as they plan their big escape. Unfortunately, good things had to come to an end, and season one was fun while it lasted. Honestly, what the anime team did to season two was criminal. Really makes the first season stand out more in retrospect, and you can still just keep going back to it and be amazed at how it mastered its own art of horror. <laughs> <laughs> 
Finishing up the list, we have Parasite. If you're a long time watcher of this channel, you know how much I love Parasite. As an anime, it feels very complete. A complete story, some themes and ideas that make you think about humanity's existence, amazing action, and a signature soundtrack that gives the anime its own distinct identity. It has no shortage of gruesome scenes and body horror. Madhouse really did an awesome job adapting this old manga and finding the perfect mix of action and horror. And as I said, it's not all about the action and fighting. Sure, the fighting is epic and one of the main draws of the show, but what really gets me are the themes that I feel are ever relevant. The development of Shinichi and Migi's bond is a joy to watch and the same applies to the anime scenes depicting the different spectrums of human nature and our role in this planet as a species. Sci-fi and horror at its peak and you get something like Parasite. It tells a complete story within its 24 episodes and it's definitely a must see. <laughs> That's got to do it for today's rundown. Which one of the 20 personally memorable horror titles is your favourite then? Do you have any recommendations? Let me see them in the comment section below. Make sure to check out the channel for more top list videos and add a subscription so you can be the first in line when the next video drops. Thank you and I wish you a great day ahead.